till now there is no such device. But actually myself actually uh, is collaborating with IIT Delhi to develop such uh, uh, strength. Maybe uh, in a year or so we will be uh, uh, able to manufacture some prototype so that we can be launched. Okay. And in the meantime also there are so many companies which are already into because make in India is a buzzword now and all are and maybe in the one or two years we will get to see most of the strengths and balloons will be, will be made by the uh, Indian companies. Okay. Uh, I am working in KEM Hospital, Mumbai and I was working with my colleague Dr. Kranti Kumar Rathod and together we have devised a medical stand uh, which will reduce obesity and this design of the stand was approved by the US patent office and we have been granted the US patent for this medical device to reduce weight in obese patients in April 2021. Once we have got the patent, we will further upscale it and see to it that whether this device is feasible, whether this device can be manufactured, whether this device will help us in minimally treating patients with morbid obesity. This is the only case that I know of a medical device which has been approved by US patent office till now amongst our interventional radiologists. There are many more in pipeline and which we would subsequently see to it that we mentor each other and develop such devices in future. Uh, on the device front, uh, we have probably the only device in the world which was manufactured and designed by an Indian company and Indian doctors and I was incidentally involved in the whole study pro project. This is a device which is what we call as bioresorbable stent and that stent the important criteria was that there was a drug on it also. So that helps to treat this peripheral vascular disease and we were the first people in the world which we used it in humans and that paper was accepted in Germany and in Paris where we presented our data and is now acceptable and now it will be all on a manufacturing front and within a year or so this will be available not only in India but all over the world. So credit goes to that the Indian brains and Indian minds have worked on it and have been successful in treating these patients. Okay, great. Bioresorbable drug coated stent. Okay, that is the name of the device? So the name of the device is Credence BTK. Okay, great. One more question to you doctor. You mentioned that Tata is amongst the world's best training center. Now we are as Indians we are proud of this and it's a matter of I think applause for everybody. But I, uh, is there any certified body or you know, any uh, such uh, data which says that Tata is the best training institute in the world for something like this? Yes, I think so Suresh would be the best person to answer this. Uh, he is heading that Tata Institute, uh, Tata Institute and is the head of uh, radiology also. So regarding especially the training in interventional radiology, uh, Tata Hospital is the first institute which has got a three year uh, uh, Medical Council of India certified DM in interventional radiology course. So we started around four years back, we started with two seats in DM in interventional radiology and recently we got approval from the National Medical Council which is now uh, with my MCA has been replaced by National Medical Council. Now it has approved four seats of DM in interventional radiology which is the first institute in uh, India for uh, training uh, the students after MD in interventional radiology. Similarly, Tata Hospital also has two year uh, uh, dedicated fellowship course in interventional radiology which has been affiliated to Homi Baba National University which is a deemed university uh, under which Department of Atomic Energy runs various teaching courses. So among, uh, under that uh, university we have a two year uh, HBNI intervention radiology fellowship course and we also have one year certificate course of Tata Memorial Center itself in intervention radiology. So at any time there are 10 to 12 fellows who are getting trained 
in interventional radiology in Tata Memorial Hospital and that is probably one of the highest number of uh, students which are getting trained in interventional radiology and that is why I am sure uh, Dr. Heman Deshmukh has uh, said that it is one of the leading institutes and it ha also has collaboration with international institutes like uh, King's Medical College uh, London as well as Miami uh, Cancer Center in uh, Florida. So we have affiliations with such international institutes as well. So one of the base training is given uh, for in intervention radiology in Tata Memorial Hospital. Great, fantastic. And in terms of to, to add to Sir's thing, uh, if you take intervention radiologists in the entire India, 80% of them are trained in Bombay and from KM and Tata. Wow. Great. In terms of industry impact, do we have any study which gives the number of cases that are being treated through the process of interventional radiology in this country? And what is the kind of you know impact it has in terms of on the industry in terms of numbers and size? And at what percentage is it growing every year annually? How many people are adopting for this kind of treatment? Is there any proper study on this? And if so, what is the what do these studies reveal? So, uh, this is what we call as registry data. Rather than the industry, it is the society which handles this. And we do have our registry data collection every year. And as we have understood it over the years, there is an average of 8 to 10 percent increment in number every year. And today I would say that, as somebody mentioned, that we have more than 1,000 about 1100 members in our society there is an average uh, number of procedures that are being performed in interventional radiology is more than 50,000 per year in India so the numbers are ever growing and I am sure the jump will be now much more and that's where the media will play a role we want to reach out to the people and tell them there is this branch of medicine which can be taken and can be helping in the treatment of a lot of patients. So the growth is very rapid, lot of new technologies, lot of new techniques are being developed and the growth is very rapid now. Great. Medical tourism is booming in India. So as far as medical tourism goes, do we have people coming to India to take the service of interventional radiologists? Yes. It's a great question. So as we have already discussed, intervention radiology is available everywhere. But the cost and the waiting list when compared to UK and US, in India it is easily available at a better price and uh, it's affordable and they can reach India easily. So all the major hospitals such as like you know the private entities like Apollo and all these other hospitals, they are offering medical tourism and intervention radiology as a speciality to all the foreign patients. As a doctor, I have already treated many of these uh, Saudi patients, Tanzanians, uh, Nigerians, all these patients come down for the treatments. So it is, yes, very much available for yes, medical yes, treatment. The cost is where, you know, health care sometimes becomes health care. And in fact, my friend was just, you know, prompting me from the end and uh, requesting me to ask this question to the doctors. You did mention cost and you did mention the benefits of, you know, shorter stay, uh, and keyhole surgery or you know pinhole surgery, minimally invasive surgery, all those things well understand and well appreciated. But can you give us an actual perspective of cost? Where, you know, how does it compare with the other alternative methods of treatment? Okay. So uh, I will also like to answer your previous question, yes. especially about the medical tourism. So in fact we do not like the term tourism when it comes to medical science because it is all giving care and not you know, earning out of Pleasure. it as, a, as the tourism word goes to. So, apart from the corporate hospitals where the rich patients from Saudi and other uh, Gulf countries can come and have treatment in India, but especially for cancer care when we talk, Tata Hospital, uh, we get patients from all over uh, countries in this part of the world, like right, we get patients right from Afghanistan, from Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and they may not be very affording kinds, but they get the base treatment, uh, you know, base treatment at affordable cost. So uh, that kind of medical tourism we practice. At the same time, 
uh, when you uh, talked about the cost effectiveness as we call about this uh, particular treatment, yes, it is minimally invasive. So it is daycare procedure. Patient do not waste uh, uh, many hospital days, so he doesn't lose his income or working days. As compared <coughs> to the other traditional uh, uh, traditional uh, ways of uh, treatment like surgery or uh, chemotherapy and uh, other uh, uh, modalities of therapy, the patient has to undergo a long hospital stay because he takes time to recover. So he and his family, they lose their income. At the same time, uh, because they are morbid procedures, there might be more complications. So the, again, the cost of other uh, auxiliary treatment increase that again adds to this. And uh, uh, as against that, with shorter stay, there is uh, significant uh, uh, saving for the patient as well as from the out of the pocket expenditure for the family. So all this, if we consider together, these minimally invasive treatments, which my, most of them are daycare, is a big saving for the patient and that is how they are cost effective as against other modalities of treatment. I think the device cost must be higher, but the gain is that these patients get back to work as early. The family is back into uh, their business or work as early. So therefore, the cost, actually if you calculate every which way, may be equal or much less than the corresponding surgical procedure. So that is what is the major advantage. So these devices have played the trick and helped uh, treat these patients more effectively. Uh, just to add to that, uh, fortunately, Government of India and uh, uh, all the state governments have incorporated now practically all the intervention radiology treatments in government health schemes. So, uh, the Pradhan Mantri, Arogya Yojana or in Maharashtra, uh, Mahatma Jyotiba Phule scheme, all of these Ayushman. things, Ayushman Bharat scheme are covering up all the intervention radiology treatments to that extent that stents are also covered free for these patients under this scheme. So, that way fortunately, uh, intervention radiology is able to reach the last mile or the poorest of the poor in the country. Platform to okay, tell you about sir, this. So, uh, so, sir, can I clarify one thing? Fortunately, fortunately, intervention radiologists across all metros or tire to tire three cities are available in most hospitals across the country. Though we may be small in number, but we are available everywhere. It is your right when you reach to the hospital and you say, I have chest pain and I need to see a cardiologist. It is your right to ask for an intervention radiologist. If you create awareness through media, Surely, interventional radiologists are now not just operating, we are available for consultations also. So, we are available for you to come across the table and discuss on consultations how you consult your general practitioner. So, we are available across the country. You have to ask for that. Yeah, so, the last so, question. Sorry, you want to add? To something? clear your doubts here, yeah, yeah. I have done fellowship in 2006 in KEM. So, whenever there is a patient of uh, aneurysm or anybody who comes into KEM, or he has been given an option of neurosurgeon, interventional radiologist, always. So, we used to discuss with the patient that these are the options and these are the benefits of these things. Coming from there, I am now practicing in Apollo Hospital, Hyderabad. Even today, all the patients are being given the options. Which doctor do you prefer? These are all options available to you. So, it, the doctor never decides for the patient and once the patient has the knowledge that I want intervention radiologist, they cannot force you to go for surgery or anything. So, it is always knowledge, 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 awareness and knowledge. Done. Thank you. So, we will ask one for this mic. Yes. yes. So, one last question that will wind up the question answer session. Abroad, there are many countries where there is a system where the success rate and the failure rate of individual doctors and maybe even institutions are displayed for public consumption so that they can make an informed choice. Our last question was about awareness and informed choices. Yeah. Is there any such system in play as far as uh, your specialty goes and is there any such system that will come in play in the future for medical science as a whole? and more so for highly specialized fields like yours. This is the difference between developing and developed country. Absolutely. That's why we still call ourselves as a developing country, right? Uh, we are yet to cross that uh, big uh, hurdle of uh, becoming a developed country. So, I believe, 
with the uh, with the growing number of doctors over here, we will be reduced by lots of pressure of work because uh, government is planning that every district should have one medical college, right? So lots and lots of doctors will come. So uh, we will get more time to scrutinize our work. Once we get more time to scrutinize, because right now we are overloaded with work. And with lots and lots of time to scrutinize our work, I believe we will soon be able to become a developed country in terms of health also. So this is a process. This is not going to take maybe in the next two or three years it will happen. This will take a decade or so. That's 15 years, 20 years, it will be able to do it. And I believe uh, we will soon become a developed country in terms of health also. There so, has to be some data collection, data analysis, and then the outcomes. So this is what we need to do. All of us are aware. And as a society, we are making an effort in that direction that all of us contribute and decide. Now, this meeting of complications is a, a very important part in our teaching program that if I have done a complication I want to teach my juniors that you should not repeat it. The whole idea is to improve the quality and improve the patient care and that is what the whole purpose of this meeting. So these are the steps and as time goes data collection, data analysis and outcomes will be analyzed and brought up in front of people that what we are doing, how much is good and how much is bad. So uh, Vivek, uh, to answer your question, as you rightly said, we need to have some figures for the uh, general patient or public to assess which particular treatment to opt for on that basis. So as rightly Dr. Uh, Vimal has said, as a society, we are in the process of uh, establishing registries for various procedures that we do. So with these registries, we are with hos individual hospital as well as national registry, we will come out with the results of uh, and the outcome of our procedures vis vis we can you know uh, compare it with other uh, modalities of therapy so patient can decide which one is better and the best way to do it is to analyze it and publish it and that is again one initiative that the society has taken to have a journal which we call as journal of clinical intervention and radiology in which we will publish these results so that it goes to the scientific community to know that the advantages of these treatments. Also as a society we will be coming out with some consensus guidelines and quality improvement guidelines as Dr. Bimal has said about this meeting. We will come out with the complications, how to prevent them as well as what can be the thresholds of complication so that below that threshold we should remain so that we can uh, give safe treatment to the patients. So all this data will come out over a period of time and that is how uh, patients will get this information. Thank you sir. Thank you.